the Honda Imus. Now put this fat little snail on the road and heads will turn. It'd be like an onion ring at a donut party, just too savory to fit in. However, I do quite like the interior. It's très modern, in a somewhat futuristic sense. Inside the Honda IMAS, you're surrounded by road racing bicycles with shining parts shown to full advantage. Love the ultra-thin transparent instrument panel. Sure, and there's that gear stick. It's cool despite looking like a stork's head sitting on a silver plate. So why is the exterior so horribly offensive? I mean, admittedly, the roof might as well be a climbing frame, and from the rear it looks like a suit of very advanced armor, but it's original, so we can't complain too much. These guys are pushing the boundaries back, as is this next concept in the current Honda crop. The HSC, or Honda Sports Concept, has that ultra-fast, super-cool, sleek sort of look, which, image-wise, puts it up against the likes of Ferrari's Enzo or the Koenigsegg CC8S. But Honda certainly know how to build a fast car, and it seems that they've opted to house the engine just in front of the rear axle, not unlike both their old and new NSX. And the interior looks good, too. The icy blue dial set against the black leather trim, they add to a very slick image. Lovely. Combine this with the streamlined, ultra-smooth exterior, and you've got one hell of a cool car. On to the Honda Kiwami. Now, if this car was an animal, then it would definitely be a pig. Not so much because it's ugly and stinks, but simply because it should not have wheels attached. It seems like Honda have opted for a real animal of a car. It's big and heavy looking with nothing particularly desirable on the outside. It's very low down in appearance. Not that this isn't compensated for by nine miles of wheelbase. It doesn't get much better inside either. The speedometer's so far away, it might as well be on the car in front. And with fluorescent lights straight out of an operating theatre, the Honda Kiwami really doesn't score too well in my books. In the defense of Honda's farmyard animal, it does look very comfortable and seems terribly spacious. But really though, how can it not be? It's so long that one end could be registered in London and the boot in Glasgow. Maybe we're just ill accustomed to this new age of car though. Maybe Honda knew something we didn't. These little LCDs are a nice addition, but as the saying goes, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it'll still be swine with wheels. But we come to praise Honda, not to bury it. For in our finale of Honda Concepts, I present a concept with no wheels at all. Now that's a concept. Uh, Howard, why are we showing a guy in a robot suit dancing with kids? This is a genuine robot. You'd never get anyone so thin to fit inside, would you? I mean, look at the legs. True, but why would a car company want to put cash into creating robots? This is one of the intelligent humanoid robots, which is, and I quote, capable of interpreting the postures and gestures of humans and moving independently in response. But you haven't answered the question. What will they learn about cars from this? 16 years of research and now they have robots that can confidently walk upstairs and even interact with humans as if it's real. Honda's dream is to design a robot that can duplicate the complexities of human motion and genuinely help people. I mean, hey, look, this robot can even fetch a newspaper. Howard, a dog can do this? Do you want to put them out of a job? OK, well, fetch this lady's glasses as well, without any canine saliva on. But why is Honda Motor Company developing robots? They could uh, drive test cars, I suppose. But you're right, let's show the folks at home a Honda concept with wheels. The all-new Honda Jet. Over the last few years, Honda has been quietly developing a 6 to 8 place, very light, twin jet concept plane. Howard, the program's called Concept Cars. But look, this jet is unique in having an over-the-wing engine configuration. With no carry-through structure needed in the aft fuselage for any engine pylons, you get a full-width cabin right to the back, giving more interior space. Hooray! But you're right again, of course. So join us in part two of Concept Cars when we show you the lines of more Concept Cars from Japan. So we'll see you soon for more from Concept Cars.